All right, thank you everyone. I'm Ben, and today I'm gonna to talk about how I wrote a C++ REPL in 20 lines of code, and so can you. So I'm a PhD student over in Berkeley, as we learned, and so you know I'm sitting somewhere in a field working on my PhD, doing some distributed systems research, and I work on distributed data structures, so making really nice, cool, clean APIs for you know, lots of complex code, and I get this thought, you know, I really want to demo all of this cool stuff that I'm making. How can I do this? And so I get this thought, you know, can I get an interpreter that I can use for live demos? And the answer is yes, sort of. And so I started doing some research and found out CERN is actually a big player in this area, and they've got a project called Kling that actually implements an interpreter using LLVM. And so I started looking into this, could I use this to actually, or adapt this to use in my parallel programs? And so, you know, I started posting on the, on the forums and very quickly I was shot down. Uh, it turns out if you're trying to run a distributed program and adapt an interpreter to that program, it is not an easy thing to do. So I started thinking, is there something dumber that I could do? <laughs> and that's when I came up with this idea of a replay-based REPL which literally does the dumbest thing possible. So you take a line of input that the user puts into the REPL, and then you literally paste that into a program that you then compile, you run the executable, and then you take a diff with a previous run of the executable and print out any new lines of output. And then you, you repeat this process over and over again. So I wondered, would this actually work? So um, basically there are two components, right? So if you have normal lines of code that you're executing, okay, never mind. so I'm going to skip over that. That slide wasn't supposed to be in there. So okay, how, what would it take for this, um, to build this process, basically, this infrastructure? So um, essentially, the, I fibbed a little bit in the introduction. So there are 300 lines of orchestration that cause this whole loop to, to come around. And then 20 lines of JSON for a configuration for a particular language, because we can actually use this framework for a collection of different languages. So basically it just takes six lines to describe how to compile your program, one line to describe how to run your program, and then seven lines to describe how to paste your program into a file. And then fans of counting will know that this doesn't add up to 20, actually there are also six lines for console prettiness. Um, this is great because we can then use it in a modular way. So we can implement a whole bunch of different languages and get REPLs for them extremely easily, and we can also implement uh, REPLs for distributed programming environments, which is actually very, very cool. And they're all around 20 lines of JSON. So let's do a quick demo and see if we can get something to work. So we have a REPL station here, and we can say, hello world. Ho oh, ho, and then it prints out hello world fairly quickly because modern compilers can actually be pretty fast. Then we can define variables. We can add things with the variables. And then we can print out things. Now, one of the things that this is most useful for is checking unusual behavior. And if any of you remember the uh, pub quiz that we had last night, there was a whole series of questions about the performance of reference wrapper. So we can just take a question. Oh. What happens if we take a constant reference wrapper and then we swap it? Do you guys see, how many people think this is gonna compile? Oh, some people were at the pub quiz last night. So it compiles, it works. Isn't that cool? Now how many people think that this is going to print out the element swapped? Raise your hands. All right, we got, we got one over there. Oh, you were a little unsure, okay. And we see, oh, we just swapped the reference wrappers, not the references. So it was 12 and three above, and now it's 12 and three below. Isn't that kind of cool? So it's a cool little tool for demonstrating language behavior. And you get exact behavior. There's no funny business because you're actually just running the compiler and literally pasting your lines that you put into the REPL into the compiler. 
Of course, you get uh, customizability as well. So you get lots of different languages if you want to implement them. Um, and you can also use this with weird runtimes. Um, and I think that is my time. This is really easy to install and use, so I recommend you take a look at it. And I also recommend you take a look at um, my other CVPCon talks. But thank you, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>